This is the Eureka E5000, a PCI Gen 4 SSD that I just can't work out why you'd actually buy it. Let's look at it and then we'll discuss the purchasability. This is the 1TB version, although it comes in 512GB, 1TB, 2TB and 4TB varieties. It isn't a full fat PCI Gen 4 drive though, with a claimed peak of just 5.2GB per second and reads in 4.5GB per second on writes, a full fat drive should be able to hit more like 7GB per second. This 1TB one is actually downrated to 5.1GB per second on reads and 3.9GB per second on writes, although we're gonna test that. Also, while we're talking about specs, this has a 300TB written rating and multiples of that for the various drive sizes. The drive itself claims to have a graphene heatsink, which is a funny way of saying insulating sticker, but is otherwise just a single-sided 2280 size drive. Beneath the sticker, you'll find a Realtek RTS 5772DL NVMe 1.4 DRAMless controller. Not the full fat NVMe 2.0 spec, which itself apparently caps out at just 6GB per second with the best possible NAND config, which this, well, it isn't. The four NAND flash packages you'll find below the controller are Intel QLC 256GB packages. I have to assume that the 2TB and 4TB versions just use different packages, likely 512GB and 1TB packages instead of 256GB, although based on the performance claims, I'd be inclined to believe that they are still QLC packages. Between the QLC NAND and the complete lack of a DRAM cache, something the controller doesn't even support, even if you wanted to, you can expect performance to be a bit of a mixed bag. Let's see just how mixed a bag it is. Starting off with Crystal Disk Mark, which usually shows the absolute best performance a drive can reasonably offer, and yeah, yikes. The E5000 is the slowest Gen 4 drive I've ever tested, with 4.6GB per second in reads, and a frankly appalling 2.8GB per second in writes, with the best case one thread and a Q depth of 8. With a Q depth of 1, well, it's slower, matching the Rocket 4 Plus's pretty naff performance at 3.5GB per second in reads, although it's offering Gen 3 drive speeds on writes at 2.5GB per second. With a random 4KB block size, Q depth of 32 and 1 thread, it isn't quite as bad. Actually, playing with the big boys at 500MB per second in writes and 785MB per second in reads, although if you drop the Q size down to 1, well, any advantage this might have had is gone, offering the slowest reads at 69 megabytes per second, nice, and 245 megabytes per second in writes too. AS SSD has the E5000 basically matching Gen 3 drives for writes, and tying the slowest and oldest crop of Gen 4 drives I've tested in reads at 2.7 gigabytes per second and 4.1 gigabytes per second respectively. Considering even the tiny DRAMless Crucial P310 is up at 5.5GB per second in reads and writes, this isn't a space or even a straight DRAM problem, it's a controller and NAND problem. Random 4KB blocks do a little better, at least on writes, putting the E5000 somewhere in the middle of the pack at 250MB per second, although the reads still have it tied with the Gen 3 drives. As for ATTO, well, I've got the E5000 in the green lines here, and as you can see on the right front, it's getting awfully close to the Samsung 970 EVO, a solidly Gen 3 drive, with only the, the writes being near 5G, or reads being near 5 gigabytes per second, although even then, there's quite a big problem with the data there. Most drives peak at the 64 kilobyte block size but this takes until the 512 kilobyte blocks to hit its peak, and it offers frankly terrible performance at the very commonly used 4 kilobyte block size. Considerably, considerably slower than basically anything else I've tested, Gen 3 or Gen 4. That's not exactly great. As for actually transferring data, well, even just loading up the drive with my usual large file dataset uncovered an interesting problem. 
that insulating sticker, so the, the graphene heatsink, meant that just even copying data to the drive made it overheat. The drive peaked at 85 degrees Celsius, which is way too hot for an SSD. The smart temperature limit is 75 degrees Celsius before it should start thermal throttling, so 85C is madness. Applying an actual heatsink here is clearly necessary, and I can confirm it helps an awful lot. Actually writing from a faster drive was okay at 2.5 gigabytes per second, despite the intense heat, although my usual file duplication stress test revealed the other problem with a DRAMless QLC drive. While well, initially it copied somewhat quickly, around 1.3 gigabytes per second, which isn't bad for this sort of file duplication, which stresses the controller's reads and writes simultaneously, as soon as it runs out of the SLC cache, basically only using one you know, uh, sort of layer uh, per cell, it reverts to the NAND flash's raw performance, and my god this NAND is slow. It spent most of its time around 100 megabytes per second. That's mechanical hard drive speeds, with occasional bursts up to 300 megabytes per second, which is SATA 2 SSD speeds, which isn't exactly stellar performance. Now, technically, this only happens when you've either copied a lot of data at once or filled the drive up. Although, if you plan on using this as your primary storage drive, then it's going to fill up pretty quickly, and then it's going to be glacially slow. And I think that brings us nicely onto the initial question. Why would you ever buy this when there are endless other options on the market, all for basically the same price and you know, sort of performance level or better? And uh, I mean, if nothing else, they're from name brands or you know, can offer significantly better performance. If this was £10 cheaper than the Crucial P3 Plus, an equally mid-tier claiming Gen 4 drive, then maybe I could understand? But it isn't. It's the same price. Hell, Kingston will sell you their NV3 drive with the same sort of claim performance for just £45. £15 less than the P3 Plus or the E5000. That's the sort of price that this thing should be at, if not lower, to make it a worthwhile choice, especially for the sort of performance that I'm seeing here. So yeah, if you've got £60 to spend on a mid-tier Gen 4 SSD, get the P3 Plus, or save £15 and get the NV3, and skip this one. Of course, those are my thoughts, and I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the Oroco uh, E5000? Is this a drive you are interested in? What do you think of the performance? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, what, what is your sort of go-to PCIe Gen 4 SSD these days? Again, let me know in the comments. I will leave a link to this one and a link to the uh, Crucial P3 Plus and hopefully the NV3 in the description if you're interested. If you want to see more videos like this one, check out the end cards and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss them and turn on the bell notification icon. And if you want to check out my own hardware, the open source response time and latency testing tools, those are available linked in the description at osrtt.com. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.